Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're gonna talk about Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank, yes. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank collapsed and wokeness and diversity are being blamed. Uh, believe it or not, we're gonna talk about this. Uh, because this is this is the main talking point now. Not that the economy could like completely collapse or anything. Not that uh, this might have been done to uh, kind of curtail digital currency, right, or crypto. Uh, no, the main talking point with the media now is that oh my god, uh, the right wingers are targeting diverse people. Because apparently what happened with SVB is they were very loud and proud about their DEI initiatives uh, to the point where some people were saying that they were just kind of handing out money to anybody, even if they didn't have a you know, viable business plan, uh, just because they were the right kind of, of people. And uh, they, you, know, you can only dole out so much money and not get a return on it until everything goes, uh, as we like to say, tits up. And they did indeed go tits up. Uh, everybody can have tits, by the way. So we're going to we're going to talk about about this because now uh, you're not allowed to criticize this bank failing, uh, you know, by pointing out that they might have lent money to the wrong people. Again, it has nothing to do with skin color, nothing to do with sexual identity, nothing to do with gender. Um, you know, a person either has a solid business plan and they're going to make the money back or they're not. And uh, so many things lately have been determined mostly uh, by whether or not you tick off the right check boxes. And we've seen it. We've seen it in comics too. We've seen it in uh, Hollywood. We've seen people getting gigs, taking shortcuts, you know, becoming directors or producers or projects or whatever that they, they absolutely load the franchises, but they're the right kind of people. And of course, studios want to make sure that their, their, uh, DEI requirements were being met. So they would, you know, hire these people and then the franchise would get run into the ground, not because of, again, not because of their skin color or sexual orientation or whatever, but because they were not the right people for the job. Um, so let's, let's talk about this. This is a very, uh, you know, sticky situation, right? And I think it's just going to get worse. I think we're going to see a lot of dominoes, uh, dominoes fall over here. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. A lot of tech news lately. We've been talking about Silicon Valley Bank because Silicon Valley has been artificially propped up by venture capital, and Silicon Valley Bank was a sham. It really was. And we're going to talk about uh, Signature Bank, too. That one is another one that I guess went tits up. And um, according to the New York Post, the boss led a seminar on gender-neutral pronouns like Z and here. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong if that's your major concern? Not do we have enough money in the uh, coffers to cover all the withdrawals, right? Uh, but uh, you know, make sure we have proper pronoun usage. So we have a lot of left-wing media outlets blaming right-wing commentators and politicians uh, for stirring the pot with the uh, DEI discussion. The wokeness discussion. Are we allowed to say woke now? The Atlantic says woke, and they're not using quotes. Can we say it now? As a matter of fact, uh, can we can we call these people wokies? Kind of like we had hippies in the sixties. This is a fun fact. This is what I think is going to happen. Side side note here: we're we're seeing more and more evidence that younger people are pushing back against quote unquote wokeness, and I think that wokies are going to be looked at with as much disdain as hippies were in the nineteen eighties in the years to come. I think we're going to see a lot of Alex P. Keaton's uh, kind of push back against this because they're going to be a laughing stock because it's gone too far. It's become a parody and it's going to be blamed correct or incorrectly. Uh, it's going to be blamed for a lot of things, a lot of uh, financial oopsie doopsies and a lot of uh, uh, other issues. Right. So the Atlantic is upset. Republicans are blaming the bank collapse on wokeness. The only problem with this line of attack is it makes no sense. A uh, few prominent Republicans finding a way uh, to to blame it on wokeness. Blame it on wokeness. I mean, this bank, they're so concerned with DEI and politics and all kinds of stuff. I think that that really diverted from them focusing on their core mission. 
said Ron DeSantis. Uh, SVB is what happens when you push a leftist woke ideology and have that take precedent over common sense business practices, said Donald Trump Jr. Um, <laughs> and the Atlantic has to get this in there, presumably in contrast to the common sense business practices that have led the Trump family businesses to declare bankruptcy multiple times. This won't be the last failure of this nature so long as people are rewarded for pushing it. Uh, we see now coming out that they were one of the most woke banks in their quest for the ESG type policy and investing um, says this dude from Kentucky, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene offered a nonsensical statement, even by her standards, saying the fools running the bank were woke and almost became broke. Um, so it's not just politicians and right wing talking heads. A lot of people kind of scratching their heads at the situation with these banks. They're kind of like, you know, they were looking through the personnel and I saw, I don't want to put a target on her. I don't remember. But the one lender in the UK was basically all about diversity, inclusion, equity. And it's like, okay, cool. Uh, do you have common financial sense? Do you do you understand how money works? Do you understand you know, when not to lend money out uh, to people? Um, weirdly enough, though, Peter Thiel, I think Peter Thiel had, I think it's Thiel, had most of his money or a lot of his money in SVB. Um, and he's, he's running rumble now. So I, I don't know. Anyway, this is coming from the New York post bank collapse, uh, bank collapses are reckoning for team Biden, sheer economic incompetence opinion piece. Um, call these bank collapses, Biden's banking busts. The administration has been obsessing on woke causes while banks teeter toward insolvency three days before Silicon Valley banks, Friday failure, treasury secretary, Jeanette Yellen cautioned that climate change puts the banking industry at risk. As she was in La La Land speculating that future storms and tornadoes could diminish the value of banks' assets. <laughs> Weather is a risk, but she was oblivious to the much more immediate problem facing banks, the plummeting value of the bonds they owned. How did nobody see this coming? How did nobody see this coming? The, the warning signs were there. I mean, there, there's a whole line of thought. And look, I am not an economist by any means, you know, but... My understanding is that the warning signs were all there that this was not sustainable. We've been saying just armchair observation for years that uh, the lending in Silicon Valley was not sustainable, that venture capital was not sustainable, that these companies were not earning back enough money to pay back these loans. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how did nobody see this coming? Was this intentional? I don't know. Uh, she was heedless to the impending downfall of SVB and possibly several other small banks that had purchased long-term bonds. When the interest rates were zero or near zero after doing nothing to tame inflation, the Federal Reserve rate hikes repeatedly in 2022, and that is kind of what led to it. Um, basically, they're so concerned with climate change and DEI is what her point is here, that they weren't paying attention to money, which is a bank's primary responsibility, paying attention to money and your bottom line. It's a business's primary responsibility especially one that's uh, public, you know, it's got shareholders. It's their responsibility to pay attention to the bottom line. Uh, so this is fortune. This was put out today. They're really concerned now. They're like, is DEI hushing next? The danger in the Republican anti-woke response to SVB's collapse. Uh, following SVB's downfall, the pitchforks are out for diversity goals. The drumbeat of voices claiming that wokeness played a role in bringing down Silicon Valley began on Sunday, three days after a bank run prompted U.S. regulators to seize control of the California-based firm. In a Fox News interview, uh, James Comer, Kentucky, uh, called SVB. Okay, so he chairs the House Oversight Committee, called SVB one of the most woke banks. That's actually pretty accurate, I guess. I mean, I went to their website and I'm like, it's it's pretty accurate. Next day, anti-ESG crusader, uh, I can't pronounce his name. He's come up before Vivek Ramaswamy charged that the bank had attempted to curry favor with Democrats by committing $5 billion to a sustainability project. Uh, many other Republicans, including Donald Trump Jr. and DeSantis, attributed the bank's downfall to DEI, DEI distractions. Uh, most alarmingly, the argument appeared in a mainstream publication where the Wall Street Journal opinion columnist wrote, in its proxy statement, SVB notes that besides 91% of their board being independent and 45% women, they also have one black, one LGBTQ plus, and two veterans. Not saying 12 white men would have avoided the mess, but the company may have been distracted by diversity demands. Ouch. So here's the thing. 
And this is what's going to happen. I think the pendulum could swing too far the other way. Um, I am a firm believer in anybody, regardless of gender, race, sex, uh, you know, religion, whatever. Um, I'm a firm believer in meritocracy, and I believe that you can find the most qualified people in any particular uh, demographic in the world, right? Uh, I firmly believe that, and I think that everybody should be given the same opportunities. That being said, there have been instances, and I'm trying to choose my words carefully, there have been instances uh, pretty pretty well documented instances of unqualified people being hired for positions based solely on their check boxes, probably for DEI corporate DEI or um, ESG reasons, hired and appointed to positions, whether it's in banks or tech or Hollywood or comics or whatever, um, because they had to fill those quotas or they felt like they needed to fill those quotas for whatever reason, or it made them feel good to do. I, I don't know what the deal is. And we've seen, you know, franchises, companies, banks destroyed because of incompetent people being placed in roles they should not have been placed in, right? And that is not to say that, you know, diverse people are incapable of running a business or running a studio. Not at all. Not at all. Um, however, I think in the mad dash to give the appearance of being more woke, to give the appearance of being more diverse, the wrong people are hired. I mean, when you go out and hire somebody to run a franchise that clearly hates that franchise, and we've seen this happen. Look at, look at what's going on with Marvel right now. You know, people who actively hate Marvel and hate Marvel fans are, are not familiar with the source material at all are being put in positions of leadership, are being given uh, gigs as directors, writers, producers, just because they hit the right check boxes, you know? And then they bring more of the same in, and the next thing you know, the franchise takes a nosedive. Now, what we're seeing is a course correction. That's what I think this whole thing is going to be, all across the board, Hollywood or whatever. Now that the money, now that the easy money is running out, there's going to be a course correction. Look at what's going on with Picard. They, they knew they effed up. They had to fix it for season three. I started watching season three. I'm like, my God, if they had started out like this, I would have been on board from the beginning. It's actual freaking Star Trek. You know, uh, Star Wars, they're pausing it because they have to rethink it. They don't know what's going on. Um, you know, Marvel, it's in the gutter right now. I, I expect a reboot or a soft reboot or something. And they're going to try to course correct Disney uh, in the theme parks. They did the same thing. They went through and they hired a bunch of basically checkboxes. And now they're having to go back and bring back Imagineers that left the company or got pushed out of the company years ago. Some of them happen to be white dudes, you know, just because they're the most qualified. And again, it doesn't matter what your race is, your religion, your sexual identity, whatever. Uh, the most qualified person for the job is the most qualified person for the job. And I firmly believe what happened. Yeah, this is pretty well documented. I don't think it's speculation at all at this point is a lot of unqualified people were hired. A lot of unqualified people were taken, you know, they were given shortcuts, massive shortcuts to the head of the line, again, to fill these, these quotas, these requirements. And we're seeing the resulting chaos all across the board, every business sector, tech, banking, Hollywood, you know, other companies that subscribe to this have hired people that really were not right for the position. And, and, you know, there have been consequences, financial consequences. I'm sorry. You know, I don't think that, um, you know, you, because of this, that makes somebody a racist or a bigot to be like, well, if it had been all white people, no, not at all. What I'm saying is you hire the most qualified person. And again, Disney's starting to learn this now. Who are they bringing back? to head up Imagineering, but somebody who was in charge of Imagineering for years, you know, who left the company in 2016 when things started getting really, really weird. And I think a lot of companies are going to do this, especially if the ESG money is running out or whatever the hell is going on with that. They're going to be like, yeah, we got to make money. You know, it doesn't matter. Is a guy 65 years old, a little bit conservative, 
and a white dude, whatever. He, he did it for 40 years. We got to bring him back to fix it. I think comics will get desperate enough to be like, yeah, let's just bring back the old crew to, to try to pull things out of a tailspin. Um, but unfortunately, they wait too long to do it. Um, they said the suggestion that SBB's interest in DEI distracted the board from its basic fiduciary duties is not only meritless and misaligned with scholarly research about the benefits of gender and cultural diversity in the boardroom, but it's also offensive, says Douglas Chia, president of Soundboard Governance and former executive, former executive director of the conference board's ESG Center. Kessler was pointing to one small chart on one page of the proxy statement uh, to pull that out and say this was a cause makes you question, was this person trying to implant, what was this person trying to implant in people's heads? Look, and it's not just that bank. Uh, it seems like Silicon Valley went woke. Let's be honest. It is what it is. I mean, I think we can use that term now. Can't we use that term now? The Atlantic is using it. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't believe that that was the sole reason. But I think when you have people that are put in in positions that they're not qualified for based solely on checkboxes, again, I want to reiterate, I want to reiterate, talented, skilled Competent people come in all shapes, genders, sizes, uh, you know, uh, ethnic diversity, religious diversity, whatever. But there are a lot of people, and it's become painfully obvious to normies, a lot of people being put in positions simply because they wanted to, to um, you know, tick off those checkboxes. And, and the result for businesses has been catastrophic. It was fine for years when there was lots of money to go around. Lots of free flowing money from banks like SBB and Signature. You know, they just kept doling out money to these companies, probably based on their ESG score or DEI score. And now it's it's obvious that they couldn't even keep it together because anybody that was competent would have seen this coming months and months ago. You know, but it's it's ridiculous. The whole situation is absolutely ridiculous. It should not have happened. Uh, they're probably going to wind up getting a bailout, but the dominoes are going to fall. And the reality is, is that this commentator on the Wall Street Journal isn't the only one saying it. It's not just the far right or right wingers or talking heads on the right saying it. I think everybody or the vast majority of people are kind of thinking it like, well, you know, for the last five or six years, especially a lot of people have been hired for positions that really weren't qualified for. You know, it's kind of weird when you've got somebody that just graduated college being put into like a management position at some company because, you know, they just happen to be this particular thing. That's a little weird, you know, over somebody that's maybe worked there for 20 years and actually understands the business. It's a little weird. What could possibly go wrong? And again, it didn't matter when you had lots of money coming in, but the money's gone. So now everybody's going to have to pivot to profit. You're going to have to find them and hire the most qualified people. You're going to have to retain the audiences uh, that you've cultivated and stop chasing Twitter clout because that's what a lot of these younger people especially understand is Twitter clout. And the reality is your paying customer base needs to be appeased first. And I have no problem with diversifying, uh, going out and trying to find you know new, new fans for old franchises, but you have to keep your your bottom line safe. You have to keep your current customers happy and then you can go out and try to expand your reach a little bit. And so many of these companies have failed to do that. And it was all about chasing this, chasing the woke points, basically. The woke gravy train, it's a lot of gravy. It never had gravy, it really didn't. The wheels fell off, the gravy train. I'm gonna wrap this up. <laughs> you know, We're gonna keep an eye on this because I am telling you right now, this whole thing, is going to be more catastrophic than they're letting on. Everybody's just kind of like, it's going to be fine. They're going to get a bailout and everything is going to be okay. It's going to go back to normal. I'm like, nah, this is going to send shockwaves throughout all of tech, throughout all of media. It's, it's going to be catastrophic. This is just the beginning. I firmly believe this is just the beginning. And if nothing else happens, what it's going to do is signal that, yeah, we need to pivot to profit. You hire the most qualified people, regardless of who they are or where they came from. You hire the most qualified people to run your company to the best of its ability and be as profitable as you possibly can be. You know, if they happen to be something other than a straight white dude, fantastic. That's that's a bonus, I guess, you know, but that shouldn't be the driving force behind it. Uh, and all these companies are going to have to pivot to profit. They're, I mean, look, I did a video on Mark Zuckerberg yesterday, Facebook. 
He's flat out saying this thing is going to go on for years, years, and the market is going to self-correct and we're going to have to pivot to profitability. And that's not going to make a lot of people happy, but it is what it is, right? I mean, imagine that. Imagine a lot of people screaming are socialists, they're anti-capitalists, and they're they're like, why can't you just hire whoever to run the business? I mean, God, I've seen I've seen situations where it was like, it's unfair to say somebody's not qualified to be a doctor or whatever because they didn't have training. I mean, that's how ridiculous. That's how ridiculous things are right now. And it's ending. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys, and we'll talk later.